Hey guys, before we begin today's video, I have an announcement to make. Due to some bullshit circumstances, I am being forced to move out of my house and have been in the middle of packing up since then. So that will mean that while I'm moving out, I won't be releasing another video for this month. However, I will be picking things up in June, but until then, I will be only making this episode for May. I'm sorry for this, but believe me, I wish I could make another episode, but with all the packing up I have to do, it's just not in the cards right now. But with that out of the way, on with the show. Greetings, travelers. I'm your host, the C-Dot that knows a lot, Dr. Waluigi. One of the people that I think a lot of us, including myself, hold in high regard are the mother figures in our lives. To me, I find that mothers are the most important person in your life as they nurture and support you in your life. I myself have a great relationship with my mother and am happy that she's in my life, and while I do have a good relationship with my dad, I obviously want to talk about mothers as this is the month where we appreciate the mothers in our lives. But sadly, not all mothers are the pinnacle of what society makes them out to be in both real life and in the movie we are looking at today. This is my review of the 1987 movie adaptation of V.C. Andrews' Flowers in the Attic. The movie is based on the novel of the same name that was written by V.C. Andrews and is the first part of the Dollenganger series. The book is one of the most famous gothic horror novels that has gone on to win many awards, which has since then garnered the book as a classic piece of gothic literature, if not a controversial piece of literature. Yeah, one of the things that makes this book infamous, and would be something that I would not look at for a review, is because it is a story that involves a lot of incest and child abuse. I won't go into any details, nor will I discuss the themes of those events in the book, because I know for a fact that nobody wants to read a story involving incest or child abuse. Which leads me into the production hell of the first movie adaptation of the book. To begin with, when Andrews was approached by New World Pictures to make this film, she stated that she wanted to be a part of the choice in who would direct her book's first film adaptation, which at one point included horror master Wes Craven. But the producers chose to go with a relative newcomer Jeffrey Bloom, as Wes's version of the story was considered too graphic by both the producers and Andrews. Which is something I'm secretly curious to see. Sadly, though, the movie went through a lot of onset hell with the producers interfering with the making of the movie to the point that they hired another director to direct the movie's ending, which both Jeffrey Bloom and the cast agreed was terrible. It just proves once again that producers need to keep their dicks out of the making of the movies they produce because it always ends badly. Yeah, while this movie was a box office success, the movie was destroyed by both critics and audiences, claiming that the movie was dumbed down and lost a lot of its horrifying themes and that the cast was terrible. Well, in my opinion, that might actually have been a good thing, as after reading the book this movie was based on, it's a type of gothic horror that I never want to read again. The movie follows the Dolganger family as the four children are taken by their mother to live with their grandparents after their father died in a car accident. However, the children soon learn that their grandparents are vicious and cruel as they are forced to live in a small room with an attic as they wait for their grandfather to die and their mother inherits his fortune. Will they be able to hide from their grandmother's wrath and her cruel rules, or will they wilt away and die as nothing more than unkept flowers in the attic? One of the biggest hits and misses of this movie is definitely the cast. One thing that I disagree with most of the criticisms is the casting of the children, as they are all played very well by Christy Swanson, Jeb Stewart Adams, Ben Ganger, and Lindsay Parker. Especially the two youngest actors, as they really feel like real kids in this type of situation. The other best actor in this movie is Louise Fletcher as the evil grandmother, who hates her grandchildren as they represent an unholy union between her daughter and her late husband who it turns out was her half-brother and her daughter's half-uncle. Yeah, we'll get into that kettle of fish in a moment. If I did have any negatives to mention from the cast, it is that the choice for the mother, played by Victoria Tennant, and the oldest son Chris, played by the previously mentioned Jeb Stewart Adams, are definitely miscast. I wouldn't say that the actor they got for Chris is a bad one, but in this movie, he's supposed to be playing a character that's 14, and at the time of this movie, Jeb Stewart Adams was 26. So scenes where he's standing up to the grandmother aren't really intimidating when you see that he's roughly the same height as Louise Fletcher. As for the mother, well, 
We'll get to her when I talk about the movie's negatives. But first... Despite the characters being a mixed bag, I do think that the set designs are really good. The creators really took the time to make this attic feel both a place for the kids to escape, but also make it feel that it's their prison. With how it's still a large and open space, but it still has that claustrophobic and enclosed feeling. I do also like how when we see other places in the house, how dreamlike they look, as the kids in this version don't try to escape till the end of the movie, and that makes it all the more sad when they do see the world that they've been missing out on being trapped in the attic. Finally, I have to talk about the music from this movie, because I find not a lot of people ever talk about a movie's score or the music that goes with it, and this is the era that has the best musical score, especially a very haunting main theme. It really feels like a twisted lullaby, like something out of a Grimm's fairy tale movie adaptation, and I love it. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out the main theme, it is that good. In total, there are three things I want to bring up in this section that I do think are both detractions of this adaptation, but I also want to bring up something I feel I disagree with when hearing the criticisms of this movie. As I mentioned before, Victoria Tennant was the only other actress that I felt was miscast in this movie. However, I think the main reason why she was miscast is because of the writing in this movie. The writers, or producers because of how much they kept sticking their dicks in this movie, change her from the book as this mother who does honestly love her children that gets corrupted by the rich society that she left behind, which leads to her planning on killing her children. In this movie, however, they changed her from that kind and caring mother character into already hating her children because she gets jealous of her daughter and husband's... possible relationship? Like, she thinks her husband might have a crush on his daughter? Well, with this family, that wouldn't surprise me. It does feel weird that they changed it, even if it was because of the running time. Which brings me to the second big thing that most people bring up when talking about this movie, and it's the fact that the movie downplays a lot of the horror elements from the book, including the incest scenes with the older siblings. And in my opinion, I'm actually glad that those elements were downplayed or left out. Not just because I am someone who is not a fan of incest stories, but because in the book, the incest moments between the older siblings is all the more creepy because they're supposed to be 15 and 17. Yeah, I feel like that is something I and others don't want to see. Which I will let you guys know that the creators originally did have those moments in the movie, but after a poor test screening, they took it out of the movie. Which I and so many others are thankful for. Finally, that brings me to the last negative about this movie, and that's the massive amount of studio interference. Specifically on the ending of the movie. The movie's original ending felt a lot more triumphant, and while it was still different from the book, it was executed a lot better with the kids telling the grandfather who they were and having their mother be disinherited at her wedding. The version that we ended up getting, however, wasn't very triumphant and instead felt silly and very depressing as the mother dies but the grandmother still got away scot-free. I did recently find out that someone did locate a Betamax version of the original ending and put it on YouTube, so I will leave a link in the description to that video for those of you who didn't like the movie's ending can check it out. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this was a hard video to make. On top of reading a very disturbing and, in my opinion, disgusting book, the movie also had some of those elements that made me feel depressed after watching it, although not as much as in the book. For what the characters have to go through, it really feels like you're put in this ringer of uncontrollable and depressing moments when you see these children being tortured for the sake of someone else getting money. To the point that one of the younger children dies from food poisoning. I do think that this movie is very well made with the sets, costumes, the music, and the cast being the best part of the movie, but I personally will say that this is a movie and book that I will never want to reread or rewatch ever again. I give the 1987 adaptation of Flowers in the Attic a 4 out of 10. If you're interested in this type of horror, the movie might pique your interest, but for the rest of us, I say stay far away from this series. And if anyone asks, I'm not covering the 2014 remake or the other adaptations of the book. I don't want to know how this story ends, nor do I want to see the prequel story slash series to something this uncomfortably disturbing. Thanks for watching, I'm Dr. Waluigi. And remember, don't judge a book by its cover, cause you'll never know what's inside. Good night, everyone.
Thank you.